Man, I rejoice greatly in the Lord right now. I rejoice greatly in the Lord. If that's you this morning, hey, how about we put our hands together and we rejoice greatly in the Lord this morning. Man, how about for Alan and how about the worship team this morning? Isn't that a great job leading us into what God's wanting us, where he's wanting us to go this morning? Hey, turn to your neighbor this morning and say, are you ready to go somewhere? Ask them that question. Hey, who doesn't enjoy going somewhere? I mean, you know, I feel like we've been on this epic trip, you know? I mean, I feel like we've been on a big-time trip, and God's taking us places. He's revealing things to me. I believe that He's revealing things to you. I believe that He's got more things that He wants us to see and understand about what, how great He loves us. I mean, that's what it's about. That's, how, that's what it's all about. That's, how, that's where the epicness is in all this. That's where the whole thing is. It's, it's to... To understand, and I, and I mean, I can't even wrap my mind up, but it's to understand how great, man, how great he loves each one of us. It, he, he loves us exactly, I mean exactly like we are. With all of the things that we look at ourselves and think that are insufficient, not where we want them to be, whether it be your looks, whether it be your attitude, whether it be your lifestyle, whether it be where you have came from, where it doesn't matter. Man, God loves you, and that is epic stuff this morning. God loves you, and he wants great things for you. He wants big things for you this morning. Man, I don't, I don't know exactly where I'm going. I mean, this is crazy because I'm sitting here, and Carter, or Pastor Carter asked me, said, come preach, and he gave me a week to prepare, and I have been preparing. But in that pre preparation, man, God just keeps revealing things to me. He just keeps telling me some different things, and, and I'm not sure exactly where I'm going this morning. But would you agree with me this morning that no matter who we are, where we are, where we come from, man, God's plan is simply, I mean, God wants us in his plan. He wants us to be a part of this big thing called life. He wants us to be a part of, of this kingdom building thing. He wants us, you and I, you and I, your neighbor to your right, your neighbor to your left, the back, the front. He wants all of us to become a part of his plan. I mean, he wants us to join in on this great life that he has in store for us. It is an epic life. It is a big life. I mean, it's something that once our scales fall off of our eyes and once we can see the many blessings that God puts before us each day in the small things, man, he wants us to enjoy that. Man, he loves us. I mean, I'm just all about that this morning. He just loves us, and he wants us to do big things. Man, if nothing else about this series that you've picked up is the fact that it takes a little movement to go be epic. It takes a little movement from you and I to go into what God's plans are for us. Man, this morning, if you have your Bibles, I want to read to you. We're in the stories of epic stories. I want to read to you from Nehemiah this morning. I'm going to use Nehemiah. That's, that's my epic dude this morning. That's my guy. He's, he's the guy that I want to relate to this morning. He's the guy that I want to tell you about this morning but if you would I want to read to you from the word and let the word speak for itself it says the words of Nehemiah I'm going to be in one the words of Nehemiah son of Halakai in the month of Keslev in the 20th year while I was in the side of Sotha Hananiah one of my brothers came from Judea with some of some other men I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that survived the exile and also about Jerusalem this morning, I want to let you in on a little bit of where I'm going with this. At this time, Jerusalem was in mess. It was tore down. The Babylonians had come in. They had taken all the Jewish people and all the Israelites, and they had taken them captive. And they had taken them back to Babylon, and, and they were held there for years. But in about 536 or so B.C., the Persians came in, and the Persian Empire came in, and they conquered the Babylonians. And anyway, by doing so, they released the Jewish people. They said, hey, you're welcome to go back to Jerusalem. You're welcome to go back to Judea. So in this, that's where Nehemiah comes in. There were, there were like three big movements, big movements back to Jerusalem. And Nehemiah comes in on about the third wave. And he comes in here and he's getting the report from his brother. They said to me, those who survived the exile and are back in the province, are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates have been burned with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and I wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before God of heaven. Then I said, 
O Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God. O Lord, God of heaven, the great, the epic God. Who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and obey his commands? Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you. Day and night for your servant, the people of Israel. I confess the sins of the Israelites, including myself and my father's house, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly toward you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and laws you gave your servant Moses. Remember the instruction you gave your, instru- your, your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my, my commands, then even if your exiled people are at the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to a place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. They are your servants and your people whom you redeemed by your great strength and your mighty hand. O Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this, your servant, and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. I was cupbearer to the king. Will you pray with me? Father God, I just come to you this morning, Father, and I just uh, I thank you for your word. I thank you for being at a place where we can open the word up and we can just reveal and we can just let it soak into us. And just, uh, Father, I ask your spirit to come in this place. I ask for your spirit to just uh, take over the words that are in my mouth, that are the, the thought process that's in my mind, Father. Just let this be about you and giving gl- glory to you, Father. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, God uses anyone in any situation to do big history-changing events. Nehemiah, he was one of those guys. Nehemiah was one of those guys in history that God used. Man, it's cool that Nehemiah, when he, when all this, when he hears this bad news, the first thing he goes and he does is he prays about it. You know, he, he's getting this bad news revealed on him, and uh, he, he goes and he prays about it. He's like, God, he, it says not only does he pray about it, but he fasts for days. He prays about it. I can only imagine what he's thinking because when you and I, if we're real, we're, when we get bad news, we're sitting there thinking to ourselves, man, something needs to be done about this. I mean, am I correct? I mean, we're always hearing bad things and we're thinking to ourselves in the back of our mind, something needs to be done about this, but, but we really never think about it as being us to step up and do it, right? I mean, I can tell you from personal experience that, that there's been times in my life I've sat in there and thought, man, there's something going wrong in the community, there's something going wrong in the school, there's something going wrong. And I never once wanted to step into the gap to fill that spot to change things. Man, I, I, can, I can sit here and think, I bet Nehemiah was that same way. I bet Nehemiah, during that time when he heard the bad news, it says he wept. His heart was broken. But I'm going to tell you, I will bet you he's as human as we all are. I bet you at the first thought that came in his head was, something needs to be done about this situation. You know, Jerusalem at the time, in this time and era, Jerusalem was this big city, and, and the walls were tore down. And the gates were burnt. There was no defense. And see, Jerusalem was supposed to be this big city that looks perfect because it was supposed to magnify the glory of God. Nehemiah understood that. He understood that something needed to be done. And on top of that, there was a lot of exiled people that had returned a couple of years before him. There was people that had returned, and they had been living there for several years. But even to this day, nothing had been done. And Nehemiah understood. He said, man, these people, they moved back. They're in Jerusalem. They, 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 man, that's God's city. Why are they not doing anything? And he prayed. And then when he prayed, how many of you know when we're in prayer with God and we're in relationship with God that he can reveal some big time stuff to us, that he can reveal we've got to be in prayer in constant communication with our Lord and Savior. Because that's when God said, hey, Nehemiah, you're weeping. You're thinking about all this. Hey, how about you? How about you? See, Nehemiah, when I first read across Nehemiah's part, I didn't think of it as an epic story. But see, the epic part of Nehemiah's story, I'll reveal to you here in a minute where it is to me. But God, he reveals something to Nehemiah at this time. I'll go ahead and tell you the story real quick because I want to focus on that first chapter. Because I believe the story goes on, Nehemiah, he lets God speak to him. He's in really good relationships with the king. 
the king allows him to go and take an army of men, not only take an army of men and go to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls, to rebuild the gates, to restore honor and glory to that town and that city, but he also gives him some paperwork that says, hey, this will give you right of passage through all these countries. He was 800 miles away. This will give you a right of passage. This will give you paperwork saying that I, the king, am telling my guys to, hey, supply you with lumber, supply you with with the, the group of men to protect you during your deal. The story goes on, and when Nehemiah arrives, just like many times when you and I step out into what God's called us to do, we get ridiculed. As soon as we step out and start doing something that nobody else has thought about doing, first thing that happens is those people, the naysayers, they start coming against us. They start talking about how we can't do it. You can't do it. Man, I, I, when I'm thinking about this this morning, I, I went to, to Roby a basketball game. What was it, Friday night, I guess? Anyway, and, and I was sitting there and I was listening and uh, the other side over there, they were, they were yelling, you can't do that. Whenever we'd get a foul, or, or I say we, Roby would get a foul, they'd holler, you can't do that. And then a good friend of mine, he'd, he'd say, yeah, we can, we just did it, you know. So that's kind of what Nehemiah's my process, thought process were. You know, everybody was telling him he can't do that, and he said, yes, I can. I just did it. I just got the king's permission. I just got a, a, a platoon of men to go with me. I, I've got letters that says you're going to supply me wood. I can do this. See, his thought process at first was probably that he wasn't the guy for the job. But as soon as he prayed and he got in relationship, as soon as he got into what God was calling him to do, guess what his mindset went to? I can do this. See, as soon as we get into where God's calling us to do, as soon as we get into our prayer life deep, as soon as we get into relationship with God, we're going to go from thinking that I'm not the guy that could stand up here and preach to Bethel Sweetwater, but I am the guy that can sweep. Because why? Because God says I can do this. God says I can do all things. See, he's telling you the same thing. He's telling you. He's not saying you necessarily got to come preach or you got to give a devo or you got to lead worship, but he's saying you can do this. And when they tell you you can't, you say, yeah, I can. You know why? Because we just did it. Because God, he is allowing us. He's the one that we get our power from. See, Nehemiah was a cool dude. It goes on, and this, the whole story of Nehemiah, when you read it, everybody says, well, that's the story of leadership. Yes, I will agree. Nehemiah is a perfect example of leadership when you read it from front to back. But also, Nehemiah is a perfect example of how leadership starts. See, leadership starts on a foundation, does it not? Leadership in anything starts on a foundation, and that foundation, if it's going to last the test of time, can only be found on the Jesus Christ. It can only be found on the rock, the rock of our foundation. It can only be found in God. See, Nehemiah understood that God had sent him to do a mighty task it goes on in Nehemiah 6, 15 through 16 is where I want to end telling the story because this is when it all happened. There's more to the story, but I want to end it right here. It says, so the wall was completed on the 25th of Eula. In 52 days, when all our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence because they realized that the works that had been done we're done with the help of God. Man, see, that's amazing. When, our, when, when all the people are telling you that you, you can't do it, you know, there's a time when they see the fruits of your labor. There's a time going to be when they see that what you're doing, there's no way you could have done it on your own. There's no way that you had the power to accomplish that task. But it's only through the power of God, and it's only through your faith in Him that you did those things. See, it's only through our faith. Hebrews 11 one says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we cannot see. Man, being epic is all about stepping out in faith. Being epic is all about reaching for something that is completely out of your realm and out of your capacity to get a hold of. But it's stepping out in faith and it's reaching for it anyway, knowing that God will fill in that gap between the end of your finger and whatever it is that he's called you to do. See, that's what God did for Nehemiah. God stepped in out of all his insecurities and everything that he had done wrong. That's what God did for Nehemiah. 
I think too many times we hear a sermon about stepping up and stepping out. And the first thing that we think about the preacher saying is, hey, man, you've got to go preach. You've got to lead service sometime. You've got to do a devo. But the truth is, and this is where I want to go with this today, the truth is God wants you to do your deal. He wants you to step out right where you're at, right where you're at in life. That's what he asked Nehemiah to do. Nehemiah, it goes on, it says, I was a cupbearer. Right there at the end it says, I was a cupbearer. Well, what was the cupbearer back then? The cupbearer was just a man with a job, but it was actually a pretty prestigious job because the cupbearer, he set up all the appointments. He was like the personal assistance to, assistant to the king. He set up all the appointments. One of the things that you'll read is that he tasted all the food before the king ate it. I'm not too sure that that would be a great part of that job because you know if it was bad, I'm sorry, you're the first one to hit the dirt. But because of that, he gained the king's trust. Because of that, the king understood that he was a man of integrity, that he was a man that would stand by what he did. See, what this scripture reveals to me is Nehemiah was a cupbearer. What are you? Do you work on wind turbines? Are you a teacher? Do you work in the oil field? You know, are you an insurance salesman? What are you? Because, see, I believe everybody has a story to be written. Nehemiah is telling us his story. But, see, I believe everybody should write their own story. Everybody has a story. I'm not saying that everybody should publish their story. I'm just saying everybody should probably sit down and write their story. Because, see, what are you? God wants to use you where you're at. That's what God revealed to me through Nehemiah's story. He wants to use you exactly where you're at. He wants to use you in the classroom. He wants to use you in the workforce. He wants to use you in the restaurant. He wants to use you on location in the oil field. He wants to use you right where you're at. So where is your foundation at and where are you going? Are, are you in prayer about that? Are you in relationship to where God's wanting you to go, where he's wanting you to go? Man, God has designed each of us specifically, and he did not design junk. He has not designed junk. You were designed specifically. Genesis 1, 27 says, 1, 27 says, God created mankind in his own image. In his own image, he created them. So it's safe to say that our God in heaven is a big God. He's an epic God. And he designed you in his image. And if he designed you in his image, then that, guess what? And he's an epic God. You hear it? It's coming down on you. Then you're an epic person. You're an epic creation. You're an epic person person in the spot where God puts you see God has placed you in a specific spot in this life to go do big things and go do work for him man there's times in life that we come across people and guess what their walls are tore down their doors are burnt God has put you right there in that spot to step up and step out in faith to say hey Man, I can help you repair your walls. I can help you fix, re, rebuild your doors. I can help you fortify yourself against what the world's throwing at you because in reality, that's what the walls and the doors were for for Jerusalem. It was a fortification to keep the enemy from coming in. See, God has put you where you're at in this, wall, in this life to help fortify others. See, God has put you in a place to serve others. Are you with me so far? Do you understand that serving others is where we're going with this epic deal? To be epic is to move. But to move is not for ourselves. To move is to go and serve others. <clears throat> Man, those people that you work with day to day, <coughs> excuse me, that you come in contact with the most, those relationships, <coughs> can become the most epic part of your life. Man, that can be the biggest thing and the biggest blessing that God's ever given you. He can give you those, he's given you those relationships for you to come in contact with. But he's not only giving you those relationships to come in contact with, he's giving you those relationships so that you can be there. He strategically placed you where you're at in this life to help others. I love Zig Ziglar. He's one of my favorite motivational speakers. And, and Zig Ziglar says it like this. He says, you know, if you want to get to where you're going in life, 
you know what you got to do? You got to help enough other people get to where they're going. If you want to get to where you're going in life, he says you need to help enough other people get to where they're going in life. If you look in scripture, it says, you know, in a, where was it I said? In Genesis, not in Genesis, in Galatians 5, 13, it says, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in lo- to lo- out of love. See, we're here to serve one another. See, in Scripture, it says, Jesus, he didn't even come to be served. Jesus wasn't, he didn't come to be served, but he came to serve. He came to serve. He came to redeem you and I. He came to serve us in this life. See, if we're going to be epic, we've got to understand some things. We've got to understand we have to move out of our comfortable spot. We have to understand we need to be in relationship with God. Man, if we're going to be epic, we've got to be coming off of a foundation. When we jump high, when we get big, when we go as high as God wants us to do, when we take off, we're going to have to take off from something stout, and that's only the rock. That's only going to be found in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But we also have to understand that when we take off, it's not about you and I. It's not about what we can do for ourselves, but it's about what we can do for each other. It's about for the work that God's called us to do. It's about for everything that we need to rebuild so that God gets the glory in it. See, when we help one another build each other up, we, we can give God the glory in that. Man, epic relationships. That's where Nehemiah was at with the king. You know, he had this epic relationship because why? Because he was obedient. See, being obedient in what God's called us to do, that in itself is epic. Just simply being obedient to what God has called you to do, man, that is epic in itself, being obedient. See, Nehemiah, he was obedient to what the king had asked him to do, and in that he found favor. He found favor with the king, and the king allowed him to go do the great works that God had set before him. Where is it in your life? Where is it in your workplace? Where is it in your school? Where is, where is it that you can be that epic person, that you can be obedient to what it is that your job has called you to do? But in that obedience, you can find favor. And in that favor, then you can reveal the glory of God by doing God's work. This morning, I want you to understand that, man, God is epic, and he's called you to be big things and do big things. But you're going to have to understand that, you're going to have to really believe, and it's, it's going to have to be something that you just personally understand that, man, God has created me to do big things. God has created me to go out and be like Nehemiah, rebuild things that I have not the ability to rebuild, but go and do them and give God the glory because God's the only one that can help me. God's the only one that can show me that kind of favor. God's the only one that can bless me in that. Man, to rebuild, you must move. Man, are you, are you feeling like this series is rebuilding you? Are, you? are you getting that mindset that you're rebuilding yourself to understand the, the blessings that God has given you, to understand the promises that he's put on your life? But to rebuild, you must take personal responsibility. See, when Nehemiah said that he wept, and then the next thing, he prayed to God. He took that personal responsibility to know that foundation that he was going to work off of, and he prayed to God. He put, he put it to God in prayer, asking God for his help, asking God for him to, to show favor, asking God to, to soften the heart of the guy that he worked for. But Nehemiah was obedient. One of the things that we never want to talk about is when we do rebuild and when we do step out, guess what we're going to have to do? It's something we're all... Uh, uh, observing of we've all experienced it we've all tried to do a little more at our workplace or do a little more at school or or be a little better here and be a little better there but we've all experienced it sometime or another and if we're honest with ourselves we can admit it that every time we've stepped out and tried to rebuild ourselves into this something new that God's created us to be then our old friends our old ways even our old self will criticize We'll get criticized, and the next thing we'll do, we'll, we'll sit back in fear. See, fear is crippling. Faith is what we step into when we want to go do big things and be epic. But fear is the counter of faith. Fear is what, what the world's going to put on you, what the devil's going to put on you, the saying you can't. He, he's going to be the one across the way saying you can't do that. 
But you've got to be standing on that foundation, and you've got to understand the promises of God. And you've got to understand that you can say, yes, we can because we just did it. Because we just went down this deal. Because I just prayed it out, and God says I can, so I can do all things through him. This morning, that is you. This morning, you are that person that says, I can do things. Because why? Because you're going to be in relationship with your Lord and Savior. Alan, if you would. This message is short and it's sweet. <clears throat> Nehemiah's story, there's so much to it. But the key things I want you to understand about Nehemiah, why he was epic, is because he was just this guy being obedient to God. He was just this guy being obedient where God had put him in his workplace. He was a guy that was in relationship with God. You know, are we in relationship with God? Are we, are we at that place <coughs> that we know we can go to God in prayer and we can say, when we hear disturbing news, When we hear no news that we don't like, when we hear things that are going wrong, whether it be in our community, whether it be in our own house, whether it be in our, our, our marriage, whatever it is, when we hear that news, do we fall back in fear or do we step out in faith? Because that's your two options. You can either fall back in fear or you can step out in faith like Nehemiah did. And the first thing he did is he stepped out in faith by stepping into prayer with his Lord and Savior. He, he stepped into prayer. He stepped into that relationship where he knew his foundation was. You know, Nehemiah says, I was cupbearer to the king. Man, I'll tell you that at one time, you know what? I was just a rancher. I was just a cowboy. I was just a welder. I was just a guy in the oil field. I can put all these titles right there, but when I really got into relationship to what God had in store for me, to where he was calling me to go, that's when I said, you know, I can do this because God's called me to do that. God's called me to be epic. Our stories, your story, my story, they're kind of like Nehemiah's story. They don't sound real epic at first, but it's the start of the story that's epic. It's always the start of the story that's epic. See, the start of your story, whenever it is that that light comes on and you flip the switch and you say, I'm stepping into what God's called me to do, that's the epic part. To me, Nehemiah's story, the epic part of his sto whole story was the first part, was the stepping into Man, that's epic. When we take that move and we step out in faith and we understand that we're going to leave fear behind us, man, it's epic to start. The start is epic. God will carry you the rest of the way. But, man, you've got to take some personal responsibility. Not just today, but you've got to take personal responsibility tomorrow on a Monday. You've got to take it on a Tuesday. You've got to take it on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You've got to take it on every day of the week to start your day in relationship with your Lord and Savior. You've got, to, you've got to take that responsibility, guys, because if you're going to be epic, you're going to have to start off the foundation of God. Man, Jesus Christ, the most epic man there ever was. Man, the start of his story, why did his story start? Because he loves you. Because he loves each one of you. Because he wants you to understand that this world cannot hold you back. The naysayers that say you can't do it, Guess what? They're just talking, man. They're just talking. They're, they're just blowing hot air because he died on the cross for you. His blood ran down that cross for you. That stone was rolled away, and guess what? He is living in heaven with our Lord and Savior. Because Why? Because he says, yes, you can do it. Yes, you can be epic. See, he died for you and me. He lived on this earth for you and I to understand we can be epic. When he took away our sin... He took away everything that's holding us back, guys. Man, he took away everything that's holding us back saying we can't. And he said, yes, you can. Man, it's up to us just to step into it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Man, that's something we don't do enough is we don't sit around and we don't enjoy what God has given us. It's in the small things. Man, it's in the small things. We have to understand that we have to enjoy this life and we can see Jesus and we can see ourselves in that epic realm right there with him. Will you pray with me? Father God, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for, man, your son, Jesus Christ, Father. Thank you for what he did for me. Thank you for, for man, him loving me so much that he was willing to die on a terrible cross, Father. A terrible death, pain, suffering, 
everything, Father, for me. Thank you for that. Man, thank you for what it meant when he came out of the grave. Thank you for what it means to me to know that he's living in eternity. That he's living now and forever. That when we accept him as our Lord and Savior, that we can be that epic. Man, that we can sit there and we can live forever knowing that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Father, thank you for Nehemiah. Thank you for a, a man that was just obedient at his work, but he was also obedient at his prayer and his relationship with you, Father. Let us be like Nehemiah. Let us, let us stay in constant relationship. Let us continue to go to you in prayer when everybody's coming against us. Let us be the kind of people, Father, that, that, that are sitting there to rebuild the walls and rebuild the doors of broken people. But not for our glory, Father, but just to give you glory in that, Father. Let us be those people that, that, that build up and not tear down. Let us do everything for your glory this morning, Father. Father, as we open the altars, Father, I just ask that anybody that needs prayer, Father, that you just put it on their heart to move in this time. Father, that you just uh, put it on their heart to, to come to you and, and just ask, just like Nehemiah did, just to, man, ask for answers, Father, because we know you have them. Father, thank you for this day, and thank you for all of our blessings. Father, let us always enjoy them. Let us always be observant of them. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.